In part two of this uh, video series, I'm going to do uh, an informal record of the assembly of the Superboard 3 kit and uh, cover some of the highlights of putting that together. So I've taken the kit uh, contents out of the box, had a look at the CD, and made a hard copy of the setup and user's manual. So I'd like to do that, have a hard copy on the bench as I put it together that I can refer to and mark it up with any notes or changes. So the manual looks quite good. There's some information about the history of how this kit was developed and some of the history of Ohio Scientific Computers and the Superboard 2 and information about the uh, capabilities of the system. And for people that bought the kit, like myself, Chapter 4 covers the assembly. Looks like it has some good information on reading color codes and soldering and so on. So I've gone through the list of kit contents here against the parts and confirm that I have all of the right components. Everything looks pretty good. A couple of minor errors in the kit contents uh, in terms of the number of IC sockets, but what I have matches what's on the printed circuit board. I noticed that the diodes that are listed as 1 in 914 are actually 1 in 4148, but those are very similar compatible diodes. Uh, the most tedious part was probably just going through the 53 keycaps and switches and making sure I had the right number there. So I did a basic count of the keys but I haven't yet confirmed that I actually have one of each key and uh, key letter. So everything looks good. We're ready to uh, move on to the next step which should be starting to actually solder some of the components on the printed circuit board. So I'm starting the assembly as recommended in the manual with the resistors. There's about a dozen or so of these. Um, pretty straightforward. The board is marked well with both the um, component designations and the values. Uh, I find it's a good idea just to check the resistance values with a multimeter just to double check that you've got the right resistors and that the resistors are within value. So I'm going to insert all of these and then start the soldering. So the soldering is going well. Using a good quality temperature controlled soldering iron and some reasonably fine solder and after doing the soldering cutting the leads flush with some uh, side cutters. So this will just take a couple minutes. I'm taking my time trying to spread this out maybe over a few evenings not spending more than an hour or two per session really more than anything just to uh, expand the time that I'm having fun building the kit, not try and complete it all in one night. Next up for soldering is the eight small signal diodes that are used for keyboard scanning. And incidentally, I like to use a, uh, a magnifier to uh, help with soldering and inspect the connections after soldering is done. That really helps even if you've got reasonably good vision to just inspect the work and make sure there aren't any solder bridges or not enough solder. Just soldered the 5 megahertz crystal and the power switch and I'm about to start the sockets starting with the larger ones. The sockets are going to account for a good chunk of the soldering that's needed. I've now finished soldering the IC sockets as well as the two SIP resistor packs. The USB to serial interface is a small separate board with an FTDI chip on it, presumably a commercial board, and this gets soldered into some pins on the main board. Next is the power LED connectors for the expansion port and cassette interface, video connector, and the one transistor. Now soldered the 11 bypass caps one ceramic cap and the two electric electrolytic filter caps as well as the voltage regulator and I'm just starting to solder in the key switches starting with the shift lock which is a special latching switch and the other, rest of the 53 switches which are standard push button switches and the key switches are now soldered in 
I uh, just need to now pop in the keycaps including the space bar which is larger and a little more complex has uh, a couple springs and a stabilizer bar. And assembly wraps up with installation of the keycaps including the space bar. So the next step is to actually power it up and see whether the board works. I'll have to wait until the next installment of this video series.